Well, it's 12.30. Welcome everyone to our webinar for Friday. Today we're going to touch on calf rearing, some simple tips and our calf range at Grain Corp Feeds. For anyone who's joining, you can certainly type down the bottom um, any questions um, and we'll address them along the way. If you're watching this recorded via Facebook, I'm sorry that function won't work. You'll only be able to watch. If there are questions, you're welcome to send them through to us um, at our customer services team. Right, we'll go on to the first slide. So basic calf rearing. Getting enough colostrum is the key to certainly setting a calf up well. And the key hours that we need to get it in is a good amount of quality colostrum in those first 12 hours. And that's to build immunity. Now that is all to do with after that 12 hour period, they can't actually absorb that, um, the antibodies from their mother or from the colostrum after that period. So we aim to get 12 to 15% of live weight of their live weight in good quality colostrum. Now, easy to say, how do we get good quality colostrum? Now, in that picture there is a colostrometer. Now it's a, um, an easy device, it's a glass tube like this, and at the very top, it certainly has your green, um, red and yellow, like in the picture. Now this is a tool that everybody should have on farm very reasonably priced and if you want to learn a little bit more about it, certainly at Grain Court, we can come out and test your colostrum if you'd like. And good quality colostrum from cow, mature cows, it tends to be the thing, don't take colostrum. If you want to do a little test when we come out, save some milk fever cow colostrum and some heifer colostrum and we'll show you the difference. So we're looking to give good quality colostrum that's been tested in those first 12 hours and in those first four days. So if we're testing colostrum and it's going into the red, give it to your older calves. If that's the only colostrum you've got, you've got to be prepared to give those young calves a lot more colostrum. So if we, we've sorted out colostrum, that's the key to there. Let's look at what other things. Attention to detail. Look, if you don't get the basics right, you haven't given them the colostrum in those first few hours, there's a lot of other things. If we don't pay attention to detail, we can really set ourselves up for disaster for calves. Look, I guess I didn't mention earlier, I'm a dairy farmer in Taranaki and I mean, I've reared calves now since I was a teenager. And as you can see, I'm not a teenager anymore. So I have done it and I've made mistakes myself. So one of the keys for us at home is we have, um, we actually have a blackboard, but most people have a whiteboard in the, in the car shed. Last year, I had an accident in the middle of calf rearing. You're able to communicate, even if it's not that you're then away, but okay, a staff member comes in the afternoon, what calves didn't drink this morning. But it also, you get busy and you forget things right up. If a calf doesn't drink in the morning, it's gotta go on that whiteboard. A calf had a little bit of a runny, upset tummy, you know, they've had some runny feces, ride it up. Might be fine the next milking, um, next time to feed them and you can rub it off. Kneel in your bedding, is it wet? If you've got wet knees and you're kneeling down, that's a recipe for breeding bugs, okay? So if we've got wet bedding and the shed smells funny, hoo -hoo, we've got some alarm bells ringing, okay? So certainly number of calves in each pen as well. Now the reason I say this is obviously overcrowding becomes wet, bug population grows, it's all, you know, overcrowding is not an ideal situation. So we've now created a pen, First, it might be that you've got 10 in each pen, they're just a small pen, that group of 10 stays together. Unless you've got a sick calf, and that comes out and goes into a pen on its own or becomes a, into a group that is all sick. Now that group then stays together, okay? So, you know, we've talked about the number of calves, the groups, disinfect your pen. You know, there's an, I won't talk about a brand of disinfectant. There's a lot of them out there and the, just go to your local merchant, buy a disinfectant and use it repeatedly. At Grain Corp, our reps, if we come on farm, we will certainly have Vircon in our utes and we will be spraying our boots whenever we come on farm or into your sheds. And certainly you should be doing that for anyone. 
Now be very careful if you have multiple sheds and you've got a shed that has bugs, spray all your gear, change your overalls, wash your hands before you go to the other shed. So we're trying to mitigate some of the risk, but sometimes things go wrong. So have you got an animal health, um, a calf health kit or a first aid kit, whatever you want to call it, have it ready all the time, a thermometer in it. I would have um, some faeces sample bottles in it from the vets, I, um, have some electrolytes and have some iodine. Do you all know what a healthy temperature is in a calf? You know, it's all very well having a thermometer, but 38 to 39.5 is that range you want to have your calves in. So, we'll, so, you know, we've talked about some of the attention to detail, some of the colostrum. Let's have a little look at this picture. Now, you might think, oh, lovely, healthy looking calves. This is not, and I, you know, I've put on the, front, on the top there, what is wrong with this picture? One, I wouldn't be putting milk into that um, cafeteria. You've got a calf sitting underneath that's all of a sudden missing out. I think you've got a calf there next door in the middle that potentially isn't drinking. What is the red spray across the back of the tail there? What does that mean? Have we written on the whiteboard that the calf that sprayed didn't drink or it didn't do this? The other thing is, the cafeteria here, look, that might be all you've got on farm, but it's not a divided cafeteria. That certainly, the poor little calf sitting underneath, by the time he gets up and gets on a teat, he's only going to get, or she, um, is only going to get a lot less than the other calves. So we've talked about the colostrum. You know, we're talking about putting them immunity. We've talked about some animal or some health issues in our sheds. We certainly want... The reason we are growing these calves is to develop a healthy rumen to get them out on pasture um, and develop them into good, healthy um, beef calves, uh, bulls, or uh, for a lot of us, good dairy replacements or cows. Now, this information here comes out of the Penn State University, so it's all, most people will have seen this picture before. So, you know, on the left, it's a veal sort of type uh, rearing scenario where the calf was only milk, uh, fed on milk only, or potentially um, a bus fed calf that maybe wasn't on any grass. So we're obviously wanting to get to the, car, the rumen that looks like that nice brown, um, strong, healthy, good papillae, and can handle and um, certainly do eat grass. So in our next slide, we're going to talk about how to get that rumen looking like that. And that is about introducing hard feeds. So we don't want them like the rumen on the left-hand side, a milk only. So we're going to have hay, meal and water in their pens right from day one, very young age. Don't start doing it when they're five weeks old or something. Introduce it early. You know, most of us are parents, if you introduce things gradually, um, they get adapted to it and they'll nibble at it and play with it. They're no different to kids. So we want to spend some time after every time we feed them at the meal trough. Just stand there. They'll suck your fingers. You put a little bit of feed into their mouths. They start doing it and they start eating meal. Now, if you are feeding milk once a day, Ideally, now this doesn't work for all situations because I know people are busy and they've got tea to cook and they're milking or homework to do. But if you could feed your calves once a day, if you are feeding them once a day and you could do it in the afternoon or evening, they then sit down with that clot in their tummies and in the morning you will find you'll get a far greater uptake of your meals um, and of your haze and things and you certainly don't get quite the weaning check because they're then on more hard feed at an earlier age and this is all to do with getting them on grass please don't go out and just start feeding them any sort of feed that isn't a purposely designed calf feed with the coccidiostat in it so we've talked about the feeds, we've talked about the calf rearing. What about the Grain Corp calf range? So at Grain Corp, we have a very wide range, but we don't just take a look at an approach of just selling a calf feed. Why do people buy calf feed? They want to have healthier calves. 
they want to promote weight gain at an early age. So if you're a contract bull rearer, you need them to reach those target weights with your contract on delivery dates. But you also want to do it financially viable. You know, we also want to save money or we want to do it so that we are getting weight gain that is cost effective. So what is the right product? Look, we need to have a bit of a look at age of calves, the type of rearing system you're doing, and there's sometimes a little bit of personal preference in there. So what we'll do is we'll talk about what range we've got at Grain Corp. We've got a very wide range that starts right from a calf milk replacer. You'll see those CMR, calf milk replacer. We sell a premium brand that is manufactured by Bay Blenders in Mount Monganui. Now this is designed potentially for people that are buying four day old calves or are not having any colostrum or milk on farm from cows. So it's your professional calf rears. Now it contains a coccidiostat, your vitamins and minerals, it's a curding product, and certainly um, it's a cost effective, your milk mixing 125 grams per litre, and that's a fully designed premium product. We also have a range of the calf milk replacer called Finisher. So this is a very much, I believe this is a product I use at home. So dairy farmer that has stored colostrum, they're on stored colostrum for many weeks um, and then they can move over to us. Now if you're not and you've had them on premium, you certainly from about four weeks of age you can move them over to this. Still made by Bay Blenders in Mount Monganui using New Zealand milk powder um, ingredients, still contains the vitamins and minerals, but it is more cost effective. Now what I've done is I've done a, if we, so these numbers, I've, I've got an um, Excel spreadsheet that I can calculate your numbers for you if you want. But for me, if I had um, my crossbred herd doing 9.5% milk solid components, if I was getting paid 540 payout, I would be saving 13 cents per litre using this powder instead of me taking milk out of the vat. So that's a no-brainer. I that's just it's but those again, it is depending on what numbers you want to crunch in your payout and the milk solid component. So that's something any of us at Grain Corp can run for you. So let's talk about the rest of our range. So those are our milk powders that we sell, obviously, as a milk replacer. Then we've got our hard feed range. Our range is called Pro Start, and we then our Pro Start starter is what we'd class as our premium starter type feed. So it comes in that green bag. This contains no PK, obviously designed right from a young age. It contains Bovatec and Levucel. Now, in case people don't know what Levucel is, Levucel is a live yeast. So this is all about promoting health. And as I said before, specifically designed, got the coccidiostat, got the live yeast. So we're developing that rumen and having healthier calves. Healthier calves, better weight gain. So this product contains molasses. So calves obviously love the smell and lick away at it. Contains 70, over 70% 70 pellets. So calves then can, tra can transition off starter onto other pellets quickly and easily. Doesn't have any straight grain. So I know in the past we've had people comment about they hate birds in the shed, you know, feces all over the calf feed. You have less birds because no straight grains. This contains soya bean meal as your protein source. And it's certainly that's a very good quality protein. So that's loose. And it's a high spec and it's very cost effective. So that's our starter. Then we've got a product range, a pallet range, sorry. So again, called Pro Start 16 and Pro Start 20. So those are the two bags there, a orange and a blue, and they are pallets. So these pallets are six mil pallets, so good quality pallet manufactured for us. You don't get the crumbs um, as much with a poorer quality pallet. So the calves, you find they're sitting in the bottom of the tray, they don't like eating them. Again, still no PK because we don't recommend at Grain Corp, we don't recommend feeding PK to young calves. Then still contains a coccidiostat, still got your vitamins and minerals, 
and they come in a tear top bag. If you're taking this out to the paddocks now because the calves aren't in sheds anymore, it's in a shower proof bag. You're not going to get into the paddock and then have to have a knife to um, open those bags. So quite user friendly. So that's our premium and our pellets. Now we've designed also a grower product. Now this grower product is about our wiener calves. So it comes in this purple bag. So let's have a little talk about our grower. It does contain some PK. So this is the only calf feed that we have, but that's okay when they're older. So PK is a very good weight gaining um, ingredient as they get older. We all know that in calves when we cows when we want to get body condition score on. So a little bit of PK now that we've got a functioning room in because these calves will be sitting there chewing the cud. You would have seen that. Still contains the molasses, so we don't get the feed refusal issues as we want to put get more into them. Ideally, this grower could be fed all summer if you're a bit short of grass. Still got the vitamin and minerals in there. Now it's also got slightly lower starch, but that's a good thing. If we're feeding this in troughs and we're putting a lot of it out, we don't want to risk acidosis in these calves. Still contains 65% pellets and it's very competitively priced. So we've touched on our calf range. You can go to the next slide if you like, Angela. So at Grain Court, we've got a feed solution for every situation. We can't always look at all these situations in a webinar type scenario. So give us a call on 0800 300 313 and we can discuss it one on one or our customer services can give you pricing for that a calf milk replacer or our calf range depending on your location. And obviously some other options, a um, territory manager can discuss what would be the right fit for you. Thank you for tuning in today. And if you're watching this on Facebook, please watch our other webinars that we've posted over the last couple of weeks. They might be informative and useful as well. Thank you.